in, in reading this chapter on archaeology in your book, you discuss child sacrifice. Mm. Can you talk about the evidence that supports or does not support the Old Testament texts on child sacrifice? So there are two books that I, and I always do this, there are two books that I would recommend, and a lot of the information obviously in the chapter comes from them. One is uh, by Francesca Stavrakopoulou, and it talks about child sacrifice in King Manasseh. And of course, I can't remember the exact title because I never remember exact titles of books. Um, then the other book is by Heath Durrell up at Princeton, and it's Child Sacrifice in Ancient Israel. I remembered that one. Um, and basically the way that, the way that the biblical text present, the way the Hebrew Bible presents the inhabitants of the land of Canaan before Israel shows up and during Israel's stay, but in particular before Israel shows up, is there this incredibly wicked you know, ostensibly sacrificing children all the time, right? And while it's possible that that's the case, right, um, the question that we, where we have to start with this is we can't start, and this is where scholars went awry in the, uh, you know, the 19th and early 20th centuries, is they started with the assumption that the biblical texts were basically historically reliable or completely historically reliable, but at least basically historically reliable. So then when it talks about, um, you know, the Israelites come in and they conquer the land of Canaan and they're throwing out all these inhabitants or slaughtering them, the reason that they're doing it is because they had hundreds and hundreds of years where they were just sacrificing children right, and doing all these abominable things. So we can't start with that as being true. That's not, that's not how this works. What we have to do is we have to say, okay, it could be true, but we need to find some, you know, we, we, it, it would be really good to find some corroborating evidence for that. And uh, if we seem to have evidence that speaks against it, right, that has to be seriously factored in. So the questions that we ask about child sacrifice are um, what evidence do we have? Very little, actually. Uh, and again, Heath Durrell goes into all the detail about this in his book. Um, but the evidence that we have, you know, if we if <laughs> if we wanted to make a case for what the Bible is saying, we'd want it from the second millennium, right? We want it from like the second half of the second millennium BCE. But we don't. We don't have any evidence for that. The evidence that we have comes from like the seventh century on down to like the second century, I think. And it doesn't come from Canaan. It comes from Carthage. And Carthage is a Phoenician colony. And the Phoenicians were part of Canaan. You know, they, they're part of Canaanite culture. So then the connection is then made, okay, if the... Carthaginians are uh, doing child sacrifice, and they're a Phoenician colony, then we can assume maybe, and I think reasonably so, that the Phoenicians were doing child sacrifice. And if the Phoenicians who are Canaanites were doing child sacrifice, however infrequently, you know, maybe it's reasonable to say that there was some child sacrifice going on in Canaan. But the evidence that we have is all first millennium, and it's like middle of the first millennium, which then leads you to believe that if the biblical texts are being written in the middle of the first millennium BCE, and the evidence that we have for child sacrifice from Carthage and maybe from Canaan is coming from the same period, maybe this is anachronistic, right? Maybe this is them projecting that back to the wicked inhabitants of Canaan, right? Which would make sense. It's what we would expect to see. Um, so yeah, the, the idea that there is uh, this widespread, I don't think anybody would argue for widespread child sacrifice 
in Canaan or in Israel for that matter. Um, but that you have this widespread, you know, all the Canaanites are doing this and it's just so horrible that all the people have to be slaughtered from the second millennium. We just don't have any evidence for that. And given the fact that those texts are very propagandistic, you, you can't just give them the benefit of the doubt. It doesn't work that way. Um, you have to then say, all right, what, what, where, where's the evidence for this? What does it say? And the interesting thing about it, sort of to put, the, put this into, into greater perspective, is that the Israelites, by all accounts, the evidence seems to suggest fairly strongly that the Israelites themselves were performing child sacrifice. And you got to remember, the Israelites were Canaanites, right? They just, they, from an ethnic standpoint, they just distinguished themselves and broke away from this you know, Canaanite identity. But they're performing child sacrifice, and they're performing it to Yahweh. Now, probably not exclusively to Yahweh, but it does seem like the evidence suggests that at least to some degree, you had Israelites that were sacrificing their children to Yahweh because you have commands against it. And again, you don't, you don't make commands against things that people aren't doing. You don't say things like, don't eat feces. You don't make a law about that because nobody's eating feces, right? So you don't see a law in the books about that, I don't think. Maybe there's like, in some state, there's something. But anyway, um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's another interesting component to this is that uh, these elite scribes that are writing about child sacrifice and saying how wicked it is and how wicked the inhabitants were and how the Israelites should never do these things, that's probably because some people were doing it in Canaan during that time and some Israelites were doing it. And in order to, uh, you know, demonize the inhabitants of the land before Israel's you know, origin story places them there. They just retroject that back. Um, and I think that's a, that's a reasonable conclusion there to draw. Thank you, Dr. Josh.